Ian, great to have you back on the show. Good morning, Pat. Thanks for having me. Uh, last time you were on, you were talking about projects that you've got in Saskatchewan, looking at nickel. You were talking about the challenges fa facing small uh, junior nickel uh, companies as well, which I thought was fascinating. But let's talk about Albert Lake, which I think is the old Rottenstone uh, project. Give me an update on what's happened there. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, it, it is the old uh, Rottenstone project. And we did do some drilling there in uh, January and February. And we, we were targeting initially with the very first hole. We had a very, very robust, uh, deep conductor that was on the eastern flank of this very, very robust uh, multi-element soil geochemical anomaly that we've identified. And the first hole proved to be it was barren sulfides. That was the cause of the conductivity. And so we pivoted that drill program a little bit. And when it was all said and done, our hole 77 has what I feel is a very, very significant intercept of the, the proper rock type is orthoperoxenite. But importantly, with very little sulfide, it had a lot of nickel and platinum group element mineralization. So it's not economic, but very, very significant, you know, 0.8% nickel with uh, only 3% sulfides is pretty significant. And I think that is a very good indicator that we're close and it, and it is telling us that this soil geochemical anomaly is telling us something is there subsurface. So at the moment we've, uh, you know, we, we've, we moved from Albert Lake and then we went south to the Go Sugar Lake project. Okay, that's how you say it, Go Sugar. I was gonna ask you, it's spelled <laughs> Go Chagger uh, Lake. <laughs> So uh, let's stay just with Albert, a little bit disappointing. Do you continue to drill out through the summer or you just say, okay, enough is enough? Well, what 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 we've come to the realization is a lot of these targets, and particularly this uh, hole 77, it's only 25 meters down the hole. And we were relying on a helicopter to move the drill from site to site to site. And the next time we go in there to drill, we're going to use a track mounted machine or some some sort of mechanism to move the drill over the ground and eliminate the need for the helicopter because a lot of these targets appear to be somewhat shallow. Uh, so that was sort of one of the reasons we decided to come up a little bit short with that drill program. Uh, I, I think in the near term, I, I'd like to go back and do a little bit more surface geochemistry and just try and tighten up our grid a little bit and just see if there's something in and around that whole 77 and in some kind of a vector that we could possibly follow ahead of any uh, future drilling. Okay, so now let's move on to Goshiger. Tell me about that project. Well, right after we got out of Albert Lake, we went straight south down to Goshiger and we had a very, very successful drill program there. We put our results out last week and we're very ecstatic, uh, very, very pleased with these results. We've, um, you know, through just over 5,000 meters of drilling, and 16 drill holes, uh, you know, from February of 2023 through to April of 2024, I think we've really opened up the potential of this particular uh, historic deposit. We, we've uh, added at least 100 meters to depth. We have mineralization as far down as 422 meters. Um, and the borehole EM is just continuing to be a very, very successful tool. Every time we target an off-hole conductor, we're hitting semi-massive to massive sulfides that are running anywhere from one to two and a half percent nickel. I, well, I was just going to say, I, I saw some of the drilling highlights that you had put out, and you've got nickel, you've got copper and cobalt bed, embedded in those. I think there were three drill holes in particular, weren't there, that you were focused on? Well, there were six holes in all, and uh, actually seven, I think it was. And uh, as, as I said, we we've you know, we understand the dynamics of this intrusive. We're drilling it in a consistent azimuth from northwest to southeast. And uh, three of the of the holes that we understand, they, they all hit mineralization, but three holes in particular had uh, zones of semi, four holes actually had zones of semi-massive to massive sulfides that are running one to two and a half percent nickel. So I, I think it just, it opens up the, not only the, the semi-massive to massive sulfides along a strike, but this host intrusive of this container unit, if you will, this mineralized gabbro where, you know, there's one intercept there of 183 meters of 0.3. You know, there's continuous nickel sulfides throughout this gabbro unit 
but we do see a, a, a later stage event where the sulfides are more concentrated and these are in these semi-massive to massive sulfide veins. Okay, but it highlights the potential to uh, dig into, if you will, uh, or drill into an undiscovered magma chamber. So what are your plans going forward then? Well, when you hit the nail on the head there. We, we feel that, uh, you know, we now recognize a minimum of three events. There was this initial intrusive, which we call a norite. Uh, that was intruded by this mineralized gabbro. And then that was subsequently intruded by the semi-massive to massive sulfide veins. And the mineralization in the gabbro, so event number two, and the nickel sulfides event number three, we feel now that they're coming from yet a source that we have not discovered. And, and that source is potentially a little bit deeper, or it could very well be a long strike. We, we have, uh, you know, 700 meters of open mineralized gabbro that we need to continue to uh, explore. But I think if we could identify this source, this feeder, this let's call it event number four, we feel that that would be massive sulfides and it would be, it should be quite rich in, in nickel. I, I would guess it's going to be two to 3% nickel. Um, and we are seeing indications. A lot of our drill holes have conductivity at the end. There's something beyond the end of some of our drill holes. You know, we've had holes down to 551 meters, but the borehole EM says there's something conductive still down there. So I think as, as we continue to move along strike, we, we need to try and figure out where this potential feeder is. So that would be part of the exploration strategy going forward. Okay, so your summer spent mapping and, and geochemistry and, and that kind of stuff? Yeah, we actually, uh, we've got some folks up there right now. They're going through some historic drill core that's in the uh, uh, LaRange Core Library where we're focused on, where we're looking at the Mall Lake nickel occurrence, which is 10 kilometers southeast of uh, Goshiger. And then next week, we're going to have some boots on the ground. And then at the end of the month, we're going to be doing a drone mag survey. And I think with this survey, uh, the intent is, and I think we'll be successful, is we're going to map out this container rock, this mineralized gabbro. And if, if we can demonstrate that this thing is, you know, I think it's going to be in excess of 700 meters in strike, I, I think we're we're really sort of opening up the uh, the prospectivity of, of the entire area. Ian, thanks so much for this update. Really appreciate it. Thank you.